Hello and welcome to the program. You're watching Head to Head on UATV. Now, the Central Election Commission has completed the process of registering official observers from foreign countries for the upcoming presidential election in Ukraine. Now, in total, 2,344 observers from 19 international organizations and 17 foreign countries were registered. Now, pleased to say, to talk more about this, uh, we are joined in the studio today by Anita Rolner. She's the press coordinator of Silber Election Observation mission here in Ukraine. Hello, thank you Anita for coming into our studio today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so first of all, can you, uh, before we start talking about the upcoming election in Ukraine, can you tell me a bit more about what SILBA actually does and what its main objectives are? Uh, SILBA is a Danish NGO founded in 1994 and what we do, uh, we would like uh, to contribute to promotion of democratic institutions and organisations. We started in the Baltics, now we are mostly present in East European countries during election processes and in uh, the Balkans. Mm. And um, w I mean, that's where you are, but what are, you, what are your main functions, your main duties when you are observing these elections? What, what's your strategy, so to say? Actually, uh, the most important day for us, that's election day. And what we do, we send out all our observers to visit different polling stations. We usually focus on uh, some locations, not all over the country, but some specific ones. And what we do, um, these observers go to these polling stations and uh, they observe the situation and note down in case they see some irregularities happening. Mm. And um, Les, I think it'd be good to concentrate a bit more on that point as well. So when you say they observe what is happening and perhaps write down these uh, illegalities, what are they specifically looking for? Are they looking at how the, the ballots are laid out, the layout of the election booths? Are they looking at where the ballots are going? Can you give us some examples? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, I was in Moldova last month and uh, what we did, we started by uh, observing the opening procedure at one polling station. And uh, it was really, really important to see, for example, if the ballot boxes if they are uh, like really empty at the mo uh, in the beginning or like because sometimes uh, there might already be some uh, ballot uh, papers inside. Have you seen this before? Uh, I've seen that like uh, they did not throw in like uh, some, some kind of a paper which showed that only this paper was inside. Mm. So this was an irregularity that we had to note down. Or we had for example some officials of the registry office over there who were very close to the ballot box and actually saw what people people voted oh, so really? that's also yeah. a kind of a irregularity that we of course have to uh, report yes okay and also i would imagine a lot of the uh, voting booths are sealed off i mean are you looking at um how the, yes. the ballots are dealt with as well of course yes it's also one thing to see and for example in moldova we saw that some of the uh, of the ballot boxes were not properly sealed like these things happen that's why we're here Yes, and um, uh, just to make clear, you sort of make sure that the ballot boxes themselves are sealed as well, like before, and, and do you, are you involved in the counting process as we, well to make we sure that... We do not interfere into the process, which means we, we are not allowed to touch anything, for example. We are just there uh, to observe and also to ask questions uh, to, the, to, to the officials of the registry office, just that we understand what are they doing, where, who are the different uh, officials in the room, and so that we get like a proper picture of what's going on. And do you collaborate with other Ukrainian NGOs? Because obviously, if you're an international um, foreign observer, often language perhaps could be mm -hmm. a difficulty. So uh, how do you deal with this um, challenge? Actually, we are teams of two observers and every team gets one Ukrainian translator. Uh, which means like, uh, for example, if you go into, a, into such a polling station, this person will always be able to help you to translate or even hear some things which are going on in the background that you as an observer, as an international, you cannot really understand. So it's really great, uh, great uh, support. And as you said, you, you're not just covering the Ukrainian elections, but you're in Moldova. Mm -hmm. I haven't been here for a, a long time yet, but uh, from what you've seen so far, have the elections met international standards? And um, are you involved in any sort of observation um, work to prepare for the elections? Actually, SILBA only concentrates on uh, short-term observation. So we were, all, we were only short-term observers, which means we, are only, we only focus on the election day itself 
and not like uh, on the weeks uh, before that. Of course, we follow the security and also the political situation very closely. That's important also to assure that we, we, will, uh, we will have no, uh, no issues for us as an organization during the election day. But really we focus on election day and uh, we will uh, publish our own report after the election day. Well, this is what I wanted to ask you as mm -hmm. well. So you take all the, the findings, you uh, speak to people, you observe. Um, do you have actually evidence to back up your observations? I mean, for example, are you allowed the cameras or t are you allowed to take photos? Because often if you make some sort of accusation, like if there is some violation or perhaps you overhear something, then you have to have some evidence to prove this. Is, is that right? First of all, usually we don't mention in which exact polling station something happened. Okay. Because yeah. what we do is like summarize what we see all over the polling stations, like some tendencies more than like just in, because it all depends also on what kind of people are present in these polling stations. Mm. Like so, how, so how do you then record these violations if you're not allowed to be very specific about where they happened? Because perhaps mm -hmm. uh, when your report comes out, someone, just to and they give an example, might say, well, you haven't given any proper example. Like, you've, it's a very general statement that you've made. So mm -hmm. um, how, how do you counter that with your organisation? What sort of um, strategies and, uh, do you have and perhaps uh, cooperation agreements with other NGOs to help you properly record the violations? If okay, you see first of all, like, we do not have, like, we do not have, like, an official cooperation, for example, with OEC. Like, mm. they don't assist us in this way. And, and what is really important, like once you enter a polling station, if you want to take photos, we usually ask them directly. Oh, so Are there you is fine a system. If you yeah. take photos, uh -huh. also like to to prevent any um, like some uh, that like the officials they they will not feel stressed or you know it's also for security reasons. Mm. It's always good to ask in advance. Um, and we have a questionnaire that we fill in with all the specific questions for each polling station. And based on this questionnaire and the answers, we'll write our report. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you, mm -hmm. because, you, I mean, just to be fair, across every polling station, you must have um, a list of questions. Mm -hmm. So so your organisation perhaps is a, no, not accused of being biased or anything like this. And that's quite right that you have the same. Well, what sort we, of questions do you ask? We follow the guidelines. Uh -huh. uh, and based on these guidelines, uh, we observe and uh, we, uh, we go through uh, our questionnaire. And um, are you allowed to say what sort of questions, I mean, if not the questions themselves, but what sort of themes uh, are you asking? I've already mentioned a few. For example, mm. is the ballot box properly sealed? This is one question for the opening procedure. Or even, I think, even throughout the day. Like we have three parts of the questionnaire. First of all, opening procedure in the morning. Uh, like uh, so, the, which means the observers have to be there even before the polling station opens mm. to just be sure. Like for example, the ballot box is really empty before the first vote arrives. Yeah. And then during the day, you have some other questions. Like uh, for example, do you feel that the process is transparent? Do you see some um, perhaps uh, um, unauthorized uh, personnel or people yeah. also in the polling station? Can be police can be army, can be, um, I, I don't know. Some like sort some of external influence, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the voters would feel, oh, mm. I'm pressurized, I yeah. cannot freely vote. So all these things have to be noted down. Yeah. Well, that's that's important. So the, you do ask the voters whether they feel pressured or, or anything like we this? We do not. Uh, no? um, direct, um, usually we don't really speak with a lot of voters. I mean, we could, but yeah. it's like, um, uh, it depends. It depends on like... Uh, what the observer feels, what is needed in this polling station. Mm. If you see, for example, okay, people are distressed, yes, I think I would go and uh, talk to them, hey, can you tell us, um, like, has something happened to, before, perhaps even before the person entered the polling station? Because sometimes what we cannot observe is what happens before. They yeah. might have around the corner, uh, there were perhaps some people who gave some instructions or put pressure on them, hey, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't do that, if you don't vote in this way, then you know what will happen. Yeah, that's probably incredibly important as well, Very that important. you don't just write down words or what you hear, but actually how people act in the polling station, if they feel very nervous, if they don't quite know, uh, obviously people might not know where to go, but if they look anxious. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's uh, that's important. But uh, I have one final question mm -hmm. for you. So you'll make your report um, after the first round of the presidential mm -hmm. elections. Um, so what happens then? How do you compile this report and where does it get published? 
Uh, okay, actually what we do, we, uh, um, we have a coordination team and part of this team. Uh, we will not really move a lot during the day. What we do, we just, um, we are in contact with all our observers and ask them to send uh, like uh, constant information about what's going on in their polling stations and already start compiling all information mm. so that by the next day, by Monday, we are more or less ready to, um, to, to publish our report. We publish it on our website and we also share it with different uh, other organizations mm. or like organizations who are interested in the report. Okay, and what's the website? Silpadk.com. Uh, uh, Perfect. Okay, Melita, thank you very much for uh, coming into our studio today. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, Anita Rona, the press coordinator of the Silber Election Observation Mission here in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more on UATV.